Hi, Anne. I'm hoping that this demo helps you out. Uh, I'll try not to take too long, but I'm going to, I'm using Murph 3.80 and I created a channel and I just want to walk you through it and show you a demo. First, let me clear everything out. Clear statistics. Uh, let's see if that clears. Awesome. All right. So this is the channel and like any interface, you have to know what your source is. You have to know what you're going to transform and you have to know where you're sending it, right? Um, so the source I used was a file reader. And if you look, I, if you look at my C temp in, I have a file. I moved it, so let's put it back in. A file named C, CVS. Oh my God, that's funny. Ugh. Hold on one sec. I have to stop the interface. It keeps sucking things in. Let's pause that. All right. <laughs> let's try this again. All right, I have an interface, interfa a, a CSV called C CSV in, right? And if I open that with an editor, you can see that I have three columns in one row. If I open that with Excel, you can see the same thing, right? It's a CSV file, same thing. Cool, all right, let's close that up. We need that. Uh, yeah, we need that. So, go back in the channel. I need to pause it, otherwise I'll keep I'll keep doing this. My file reader is going to look at my C temp in directory for the file we just talked about. And then when it's done processing, I asked it to move. And I asked it to move it to my C temp in archive with using the original file name. You could change this and put original file name and then maybe an underscore and then put the date. You can do stuff like that. It's really cool. Or you could hard code here too. You know? But let's see the original file date. Um, if there's an error in processing, I said do nothing right now. I just want this to work. I want to show you. I'll say in my transformer, here's what I did. I mean, it was, I put my template, right? Because I know that my this is my CSV file. So I use my CSV file as a template, right? And then I went to properties and under column names, I copied my column names. Murph doesn't like spaces. So make sure you don't have spaces in your column names. And I copied it in here. I hit enter and okay. And then what this does is when I go to my message tree, I can see the names of the columns. See, patient name, gender. My first row is the column. I mean, technically I shouldn't even do that, right? That's, you don't need that because I have my columns. But, yeah. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave that the way it was since I, I, this is already working and I don't, I, it's getting late. I don't want to do this all night. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And the first row is the header. So, it's not zero, you, they want this to look at, it's one, right? Look at one, not zero. All right. And what I literally did was, it's really it's really this easy, watch. Let's take my data column. Actually, here's my HL7. So I have my the limited text, which is CSV, and then I want this to go outbound as a HL7. So what I did was, I went to patient name, I grabbed the green circle, and I dropped it. And then I said, okay, now my temp 5.1 should equal my CSV patient name. And I did the same thing again. What's next? Patient gender. So in my HL7, I want this to equal my incoming CSV value of gender, right? Don't make boo boos like that. If you do, we delete it. And the last one was patient date of birth. So we know the patient date of birth is PID7. I'm going to grab my 71 by the green circle. And I'm going to set my HL7 equal to my incoming CSV value. And then you see my drag and drop. You can see how this, how I got this. Right? That's how I got that. Cool. 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna save this so yeah let's just do this looks like I screwed something up over here yep but I'm not gonna save this anyway okay so now I have a transformation and now I'm going outbound it's an outbound anyway usually it's another file file path location whatever it needs to be for now I left the channel writer so that I could just get this going so that channel is right here deployed you go into C. I'm gonna start it. Wow. Here's the file. I'm just gonna take this file, suck it in, take these values, and stick it in the HL7. And then that's that. So I'm gonna unpause this. I'm gonna start the interface. And then you're gonna see this disappear. Uh, one second. I forgot to rename the file. It's not CBS, it's CSV, right? You can tell I'm doing this live. All right, let's try this again. So let's go ahead and deploy that then. And we'll see this disappear. Yeah, it disappeared and went to the archive folder, just like I told it to do. Oh, I have two of them. All right, let's get rid of that. So let me show you what happened. Murph took my file, did apply the transformations to the PID, you can see right here, and then it went to destination and it said, all right, now send this HL7 over to my destination, which happened to be my channel writer. And you can see my values in here. Pretty cool, right? Let's change it so you see that this isn't hard-coded. Let's change this to Yeah, that's right. I renamed it. Let's change this to Right. All right. Now let's take this put it in here and let me process it. And then go check it out. And now I should see message number six. Incoming. Outgoing. So that's how you do a flat file. I'm going to attach this channel here for you. I hope it helps. But at least you get a high level view of how this works. And obviously if there were multiple rows here. You would do it right, the multiple rows here in your source, not there, in your source, CSV. You would put, just wrap a for loop around here, for da 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 da, and then loop, you know, I do that. Um, use an incrementer, and then this would be dynamic. Um, but I just wanted to keep it simple, one row in, one row out. Uh, that's how you do it. I hope this helps. I'm so sorry that um, I missed your email. Um, it's been crazy here, but um, I hope this helps. And for what it's worth, good luck, actually. I know you're going to do very well. Thanks, Anne. Good luck.